give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
You're running the rest of the race with one eye closed. You try to rub it out. And have, have you ever been? To, South Boston doesn't use Speedy Drive. Have you ever seen what they use? You know, yeah. I, I've been there, but I, I it's don't. It's paper. Really? Yeah, it's paper, and it's just as bad as Speedy Drive. <laughs> I didn't know that. But, but then, it is I like a paper. Uh, wow. Yeah. Never knew that. That's probably. I've been to a couple of tracks. They, they just drive the field through it until it's gone. I've, I've, gone, I've, I've gone enough. Been there, done that. <coughs> Dirt tracks don't even do that. They what are you going to do it. on dirt? It's yeah, dirt. Yeah, you yeah, put more dirt on it? It's there. <laughs> you, nothing you can do about it. I've seen them burn alcohol off, though. Oh, you get an alcohol spill? Alcohol spill. They'll off. burn it off. Yeah. Really? They'll light it up and burn it off. That way the cars don't roll through it and backfire and set it on fire. Set it off. And, then you, you get know, the ring of fire. Then you, yeah, you're <laughs> the ring of fire, you know, going through it. So, I mean. So how did racing go for you Saturday night? It went pretty well. I mean, we had a fast car. Qualify? In. Where'd you qualify? At? Well, we we qualified third, and then after the inverted, they inverted the top eight cars, and so we started. Oh, that's right. You guys do the wheel, right? Yeah, you spin the wheel. Yeah, and uh, started started sixth, and we got up to the front pretty quick. We ran up top three the whole race, and ended up finishing third. So I was real pleased with the car. I mean, we just got to get a little bit better to try to get there and get the win real soon. So, but. I mean, overall, the car has been really good. We're we're getting better and better every week. We just gotta, you know, find find a little things to speed us up right. just a little bit. But I mean, as long as you can keep consistently plugging along in the top of the pack, there, you know, top three, top five. Yeah. The wins are coming. Yeah. So I mean, it's just a matter of time till till luck goes your way, especially with the invert because you, you you're bound to catch the break and catch the luck. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But pretty much the main thing we just try to do is keep ourselves in position to win every every race and just eventually the win will come and exactly so exactly but i mean just running up top fives top threes i mean that that'll give us really good points you know if you can get a top three every race you'll win a championship uh, so. yeah yeah realistically you will i mean uh you know sean did a couple of years there and nothing with seconds and thirds <laughs> he, he, he put put one win down and win a championship did it last year yeah, I go ahead. we had two wins, and the rest were all top fives so except for one. Oh seven, I think he had uh, one, two wins. We had like four or five finished behind him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it, it's uh, all it's it, consistency is the name of the game. Well, it is, it is. It's uh, you know, last last year with the with the tour when we won a championship, it wasn't like I said, it wasn't about how good our good days were; it's how bad our bad days weren't. Yeah, you know, when when things went bad, it, it didn't go that bad. You yeah, know, or it was timed. You know, so if we did DNF, it was like, you know slugfest night where very few cars finished, and we finished mm -hmm. or didn't finish towards a, you know the, the better of the bad ones. You know? Yeah, and just uh, you know staying out of trouble, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to stay out of trouble, especially like with when they do the invert and say you qualify on the pole, invert the top eight, you got slow cars up front. I mean, it's hard to stay out of trouble when you do stuff like that. Well, you know, this is something we were talking about. We were talking about, you know, we've, we've always had the discussion, Matt, of the uh, the old good old heat race. And everybody says, you know, heat race crashes, heat races crash cars and tear up equipment. And I, and, you know, I always say, you know, races don't tear anything up. Racers do. Yeah, that's true. You know, so it, it, it really comes down to the drivers. And if, if you're going to, you know, tear stuff up, they blame double file restarts for tearing stuff up and the cone for tearing stuff up. No, it's, it's, it's the, the guy drivers. that tries to go three wide in turn yeah. one to tear stuff yeah. up, not the fact that they were going in there side by side to the begin guy, with. The guy who thinks he can win the race on the first lap. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's you know when you you, you see that guy drop down three wide and you're behind him, it's ooh. Yeah. Start waving, start waving <laughs> and back off. It's gonna be ugly. Yeah. <coughs> but you, you see this stuff like that happen when I'm driving and I see it's three wide in front of me, especially Langley. I mean, it's barely even a two groove track. Three wide, I just back out a little bit because well, the wreck's coming. And I see people, you know, some drivers will actually try to get in closer and try to, you know, try to follow that bottom car through. And realistically, if it works for them, they're going to be going so slow through the corner if it works. Yeah. That all you got to do is just roll in there a little faster. You yeah. Know, just release. Once you see that they've survived it, just pick it up a little bit because I mean they're running three wide. Yeah. How fast are you going to go? Yeah. If, you know, if you can't pick it up in one corner, make up four or five car lengths to three cars running three wide, yeah, you probably shouldn't even be trying. You should be pointing to the guy behind you to go around. Yeah. Well, the argument about that is, is that you know, I, I keep hearing it, and, and I and I've always said it before. There's more grooves at Langley Speedway than what people think. K and N proved it too. Yeah. Because they were making it three wide. Well, I'll tell you what. Now, when you get a touring series like that coming, nobody's tuned to that track. And that track is an oddball. So everybody's really struggling. 
it, but they made it work too. Well, you've had race car. When you when you got a race car that doesn't work there, how many grooves do you try? Uh, every single one that's a, possibly available. Dozen of them. Yeah. I, I'll run up against so that wall to make it work. So when you get an entire field like yeah. that, yeah, there's a lot of grooves because somebody said, "Well, let's try it up here," and another guy, "Let's try it but, on the bottom." Well, and, but you you see Danny and Greg and, and some of the older guys still. My deal is is it, it, we know it's there. It can be run competitively. It's you paved. Know. Of course it'll work. It, it, it'll, it'll work. <laughs> you know, but, but Danny and Greg and some of the old timers, and I hate, to call, I hate to say that, but some of the guys that have been racing a long time can find that second group and they can make it work. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's tough to make the Highline work, especially in something like Pro 6. Not as much horsepower as late models or anything like that, but... I mean, it's possible to make we, we, it work. We passed can, on the outside last yeah. year. I mean, you can make pulled it off too, there. but it's probably the hardest track to run on the outside. Yeah, it it is ball. very difficult because the straightaway yeah. is so round. You don't get that that outside momentum run. Yep, exactly. That you would at a, a track with a distinctive straightaway, straight like a away, South yep. Boston, like a Langley, uh, not like a like a South Side, something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I got up on the outside of Chris Johnson at, at, at South Side, and we ran door to door for ten or twelve laps, and it was great racing. Uh, same two cars at Langley. I maybe would have stayed out there for a lap. A lap, yeah. yeah. You know, Southside's a good place. In a lap, either I'd have gotten the advantage to him, or he'd have gotten the advantage. Yeah. But I never would have been able to drive up on the outside of him because it's a constant turn. South mm -hmm. Boston's a good place to run side by side too. Hey, but South Boston's another one of these tracks where you, you, the apron has become no longer the acceleration deceleration lane. It has become the lane. In turn four, I, I wholeheartedly agree, and it's always been that way though. It, it it honestly has because when we went up there four or five years ago with the Legends car, you know that was the big deal. Sure, give him one, won't give me one. I see how you are. There you, go. you can cheat. We'll put it right here in front of Anthony. He's probably the only honest one out of all of us. He's not yet corrupted. Yeah, but the night's we're young. working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> but yeah, actually, um, I, I've noticed the the apron at Langley is starting to come in a little bit. Really, you can you can run down there if. If you can get the car well, right there. Yeah, yeah, and my problem with it is it's not there to run on. Yeah. And it, I, it, it's starting to cause issues more and more. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with that. I mean, and I use the apron as you, much you more know, than anybody else. Yeah. But two races ago, I got down on the bottom on the apron behind Anthony Kincaid, and I thought Anthony was just down there digging on the apron. <laughs> He had a little rump in the bumper, and he's giving me the wave off. He, he was pitting. He was pitting. And, and it, and by all right, he's in the right place to pit. I'm in the wrong place to race. Well, we raced the wrong there. Wrong place, wrong time, too. Uh, yeah. Well, and and yeah, you see where you know, the dilemma's and, coming well, on. You know, I did not, you know, I, I just barely tell you he had broken something in the rear end, and I just gave him a little touch. He got out of shape, and I was like, ooh. And, you know, I didn't realize something was wrong. Unfortunately, you know, Anthony's a very competent driver, and I didn't bury into him, so it didn't cause a disaster. But... Well, we can some just other, as easily could have been. Well, you know? and, yeah, and some other. He's trying to get off pit road, and I'm thinking, yeah. he's just burying it on the bottom of the way I would. You know? a, a lesser. They had, they had the twin, was it 75? So Peter Sellers, people came out, Natalie Sav Sav came out. All they the had time. an incident with the, with the and apron. She, and she was down in the apron and waving away. It was getting ready to turn in, and somebody was trying to pass down the emergency apron. All of a sudden, oh my God, you wanted before cars crunching into each other. Uh, uh, Jeff Shiflett was another one. Is that what happened that in that situation? You, no. And then that was during that same race with um, uh, who destroyed the two cars, Philip Morris, and um, they were running second and third. Um, uh, Brandon Godovic. Yeah, Brandon. Trying to go around Jeff Shifflett, who was down on the apron. <coughs> Just a couple races back. And right? Pey yeah. Peyton yeah. went to go underneath. And yeah, that's when they had the was it double 75s, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that when everybody plus. came out. Philip Morris was here, Brandon, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, Natalie was down. And Natalie in was your case, too. though, a le lesser driver. Less experienced driver, that would what you just explained to us. That would have caused a, a serious accident. Sure, and I mean, had it been yeah. somebody that doesn't have the experience of going sideways like Andy, Anthony Kincaid, you know, I mean, this a guy, you know, he's a super late model, uh, you know, dirt model, uh, dirt track racer. So you can you can turn him damn near backwards <laughs> and he'll pull it out. You know, yeah. had it not been him, it, it probably would have probably would have been. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. So does Langley need to do something about it? Hell yes. Well, you know, last year, you know, part of the driver's meeting every week was don't run on the apron. What happens if we go on the apron, Bush? You'll see. And nothing, nothing happened. Happen. Well, I tried it to see, well, and I gained a spot. So, well, <laughs> so I just, kept, people, people, I just kept doing it. For some people, it's worked, but if you get in a bad position, like what happened in the late model race, you had four cars that got tore up because somebody decided to be on the emergency lane, 
Well, they shouldn't have been. But you know, Roger, it's, it's become part of the racetrack, and it's you know, I, I found and, and it like, shouldn't be part of the racetrack. I found myself in a battle for the lead one time last year, where you know I'm driving in on the stripe, and the guy behind me dies to the apron, and he gets up inside of me. <clears throat> great, great move. Now we're running down the front straight. And I have the dilemma in my head of, well, if I run down to the stripe and put him on the apron, technically I've run him off the racetrack, and he's got all the right in the world to do whatever he needs to do to me. Yep. But if I don't run down to the stripe and I leave him a car with, and he does use the apron, it's gone. This race is over. Yeah. So, and it, it's got to be dealing with this. And I see it more in the late models in the... And the modifieds, really. I don't really see the lesser divisions using it all that much, but the I don't car, really get to the watch them. guys do? But you car guys would drive on top of the wall if they could. I that's, mean, the, that's the wonderful <laughs> thing about those entry level yeah. divisions, is yeah, they can but. run four wide. And it's, <laughs> it's by far the most spectacular, exciting racing. It is. This, any track you go to, the slower the division, the better the race the, is. The better the racing is. It, the less experienced drivers that are in it create. The well, good racing. Some, yeah. some of their inexperience does create some of the racing as well. Well, it does. It, it really does. And I mean, they're really, really fun to watch. You know, as long as they're not getting ridiculous and just you know playing bumper cars out there. But yeah. you know, they they usually do anyway. But even when they do that, they still save the things ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, if I did that to you in a modified, they'd, they'd need four records to pull us both out of the wall. <laughs> Some of the things they do down there, yes, I agree yeah, with that. You cars just straighten them out and yeah. keep yeah. on getting it, you know? Well, you cars really point the front tires where you want to go and floor it. I mean, yeah. 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 But it's not even so much the U cars. I've seen it for years with you know the entry level street stock divisions, the super, super streets, get away with, the enduros, get away, get away with and, yeah. the pickups. Uh, the mini trucks do to some degree, but those things are getting really, really fast and at that point of twitchy. Yeah. Like like uh, like any upper scale race car. I don't know if it's the tire they run or, or or what it is, but they're getting more like mini stocks used to be, you know, full caged and. You, you know they're starting to get some technology in there. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're, get, they're they're definitely getting cute. Yeah. Uh, we got a question here. Uh, what do you do with that then? Rumble strip, rumble bumps on the lane. Well, actually, that's a good question. Darren was they uh, they tried putting rumble strips down there, and uh, I, I don't know ago. they used super glue or something because they came right up. I nip one with the left rear tire, and the next thing I know, there's a caution out because you know it was they're flying. I practice, and they were flying all over the place. Uh, I mean, realistically, the only way to put rumble strips down is to go out there and lay down lumps with, of asphalt. With, yeah, yeah, like they had before. And then you make an extremely dangerous emergency lane if you're using it for an emergency. Well, you don't do. I don't think you have to do it all the way across, but you need to do have it. Have you where, seen where I run? <laughs> he hooks one wheel, tries to get one set of. On the well, side down or well, one of the restarts like, coming from the, the back, days, I dipped dirt to, coming off it too. We used to hook the corner <laughs> well, was where the asphalt rolled over and there was dirt. There was actually ruts getting driven in. About three yeah, years back in, well, back, years back back in the day, had, that was a three and four. Section yeah. and, the ape and, and the rumble strips, which was great because if I got in a, into a situation diving under somebody and they didn't realize you were there, you could run the car on the rumble strips and it would give you enough time. And it would well, start and, skating and you could put those rumble strips. Not just cross yeah. them up. You could run down and, and and then rub up on. And you can put those rumble strips back about where they used to be, and I think it would cure your problem because well, you would still be able to go over it in an emergency situation, getting the hell out of somebody's way, or you had to get to pit road. But if you tried to use it as a racing lane, but if it'd be you, impossibly right. inconsistent. Now, now when you do the rumble strips, you know how you have your yellow line would be continuously going around. Make the rumble right on top of the yellow so you actually have a lump there. So if you're running down emergency, you're fine. And oh, you, like a road race curving. Yeah, and that way if... Oh, hell no. To, we'll be we'll be hitting that left front with it and loading up that right rear and picking up Martinsville, two tins. A Martinsville, a Martinsville curve. curve. But, but no, no, not the whole thing. I'm talking two-foot strip. Go about 20 feet, another two-foot strip. So it's not consistent, so you can't gain an advantage. If you try to do it and you go too low and you hit it, it'll kick you out up the track. So guess what? You better keep your butt outside the rumble Well, now strip. you remember the first when they when they first put that apron in there, and, and it was very very green and, and had that old that new asphalt oil coming and up. And it was yeah. rough. Huh, it's still rough. Yeah. It's not yeah. very smooth, and it's off cambered in places, and it's it's not a comfy feel down there. But yeah. it does work. Yeah, it works. Yeah. But that apron initially, any time anybody went on it, it would just spit you back up into the fray like yeah. uncontrollably, yeah. and it. it that destroyed a lot now that of it's getting cars. worked in, though, now, because of people running despite down despite the fact that it's off cambered, it gets more. It's grip. new asphalt with a lot of rubber. It can actually get a better bite off there. I mean, you see how low 
some guys are running off a four, they're actually jumping the drainage ditch coming off. Sean did it. I did it once or twice laps. Saturday night yeah. myself, and that's that's getting yeah. It's not fun. That's paint it, make it slick. That's another idea too. Time paint the to whole sucker and paint it slick. Paint it, make it slick. Yeah, I mean that's not a bad idea. But you run about but thirty. Then again, la- run but, about thirty laps on it, and, well, she, and she'll be back to being. But then tanky. you get back to the problem of it is an emergency lane, and if you are using it for a true emergency, the last thing you need is a slick lane. Because now you're going to have legitimately Paint. broken cars or cars with a flat tire or something like that. Slick it at about and that far down in, off the racing groove, so they can't use it, and, and it's going to be impossible to cross over. between that and the racetrack. Now, put a wall. I'll start hooking it. We'll drive, we'll drive we'll right hook, across that. Yeah. We'll hook it like and then just be it. spitting turf up there. Put a wall. <laughs> never, tell you, never tell you the time Mark works through, through grass at me. No, oh, I believe he did. did I tell you start, no, no, I mean literally. We, we started a race, and I think he was fourth, and I was fifth, and was on the start. And I got up inside him, and his, he had a little miscue on the, on the spotter. And he, he came down, and, and I went all the way down. This was before they had the apron. And I went all the way down into the grass, and they had just sodded the place. So I went all the way down in the grass. I slept, and we bumped doors. Hey, you know, fine. We laughed, joked about it. No big deal. But they threw a caution because I took, I don't know, several hundred feet of sod <laughs> off the infield. So I was telling him, you know, they don't make you pay for that. Go out there and fix that grass. That was all that brand new sod. Next week we come out. He's qualified fourth. I'm qualified fifth. We're out there, you know, <laughs> scrubbing the tires. And all of a sudden Mark's car just stops wiggling. And I see him doing something in the car, and a big hunk of turf comes <laughs> out the window. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it at you. <laughs> I laughed till the green came out. <laughs> what did he do? Put it in his car and a, waited for he you to... A, he brought a hunk of turf in the car, <laughs> and he threw it at me. <laughs> That's Mark. That's you. classic. That's classic. I, I enjoy it. That was funny. Yeah. But come on. Whoever threw, throws a hunk of turf at the car. Yeah. Lord. So who we got calling in? Where are we at? We got Tell Trevor Edge Edwards calling in at seven thirty, and then Robert Richardson is supposed to be calling in seven forty-five. So we got about eight minutes. We got about eight minutes that we can kill. Somebody to talk to calls in, and we've uh, we've basically uh, we've bullshitted our way through this. Absolutely, all about the uh, apron at Langley. I think pretty uh, much. We, we could probably go on much. a little bit more about the apron if we wanted to. We, well, for we every ran, solution, there's a problem with. Well, it. we we ran the legends up at South Boston, and that's what I was going to tell you about that apron. And um, Eddie Johnson's probably one of the best at it. I had a great time racing from the back of the is pack he with fun? Him the other night. Oh, is that, he a blast? That car he had, had, had no motor. I wanted to push him down a straightaway so bad, but he was doing so good on his own. I was like, don't screw him up. Just keep following him. <laughs> It, 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 that thing's a hundred years old. It was exciting to watch him because he'd go in the corner on the outside and jack that thing and point it right to the bottom, skip off the apron, come up underneath somebody. I was go Eddie, get him, get him. <laughs> oh, I gotta follow him. Man. Get him there. <laughs> He's a fun guy to, to race with. I've always enjoyed watching Eddie run because he can do things with a car that's amazing. That's, that's the, sec- that's truly that's the amazing. second time I race against him, and I, I enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's one of those guys that when, when I do race against him, it's like you learn something off of him. Yeah, you know when we ran at Southside, I was uh, uh, I was behind Hoylman. I think we were battling for a lead or second, something like that. And uh, Eddie came up from the back. He cut a tire early. He came up from the back, and you know I just I couldn't get the car to work up on the outside. Eddie put that thing up on the outside of me and just choked, just chipped his way out to the lead. And I watched him for a little while, and I went home and fixed it. And then the next week <laughs> we could run on the outside. Right, and, yeah. and I learned something, you know. And it's yeah. it's not uh, not too many guys I can actually do that for because Eddie's. And he, he's not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and knock you out of the way. He, he'll he'll drive. He'll just out drive you, out work you. And if he, and he can do that, you, yeah, he'll let you go. Yep. You know, it, it, a very very sharp race car drive. A lot of, a lot of fun. Um, and and some of the nicest Eddie and Chris are some of the nicest people. That whole family. Yeah, uh, I get along with you guys. Are, are yeah, just I, really I nice people and and just great, great people. I and I enjoy watching Eddie race. I really I really do. His dad, when his dad was alive, says Eddie used to be seven. He get he gets to be seven foot tall when he gets in the car. Oh, he's a big man. <laughs> he's a big he's man a when he's in the car. He's yeah, yeah, he, he is. runs clean. He That's my kind of racer. Yeah. That's my kind he of racer. Is. I mean, I was one of the most. I, I guess one of my biggest brags about the other night. I had you know two twice from the back of the pack and never used the front bumper. Never, and, never, and never touched deserve, the car. Never touched yeah, the bumper. And, and you deserve I just, a cre- I drove congratulations. And I, and thank you. And I, if I couldn't get them, I couldn't get them, and that was it. I'm not going to go out there and knock people out of the way. Yep. Because you finished second in that last 30 lapper. No, After- I got I got up to uh, 
I got fourth. I, I picked off the 57 right at the last minute. Uh, I got him by like a foot. Oh, that's right. That's line. you did. Well, we you ran did. out of time. We had, good, we had a good car. That's, it's just, that's right, because you and, you and Todd ran side by side, just, the 57. Uh, yeah, we just ran out of time. And actually, it was I, I got up behind Eddie, and Eddie was battling everybody side by side and really didn't have the motor. He made the moves, and I just couldn't outgun him down the straight. I, you know, and I was... I was looking three wide. <laughs> you know, I just did the opportunity didn't really present itself just didn't to present do it itself. without without having a yellow flag and a lot of middle fingers. So, <laughs> so, so what what do you think of the emergency lane? I know you've had some fun times well, and bad times with that emergency lane. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't pin the whole car down there. Sometimes if the car's not working right, you know, I'll pin it down and turn three and four, or whatever, get it to turn a little bit better or whatever, but. I have a little bit of trouble actually using the full emergency lane to to go through the corner. I just I, I can't get the car to ride down there the whole way around. It just it I don't. Mean, you're you're already you're set up to be running on a little bit of an angle, but mm -hmm. once you get down there, you're kicked out anyway, and it's going to automatically try to yeah. create a push condition for you. Yeah. So I mean. So it's doing what it's supposed to kick you out, but if you can make your car turn down there, then. Yeah. I mean there. There's certain things you can do to get it to to work down there. Yeah, rear steer works. Yeah. Well, the problem is rear steer continues to steer. I've I've tried that and it's. Now, you, you, I don't like it. I don't like it. You're, you're not a fan of rear steer. Uh, I mean, to a degree. To yeah. a degree. I mean, every car is going to rear steer a little bit, and and just that that trailing arm swing I like. But to actually set the rear back and my car builder uh, John Matt like that built the OE, uh, the chassis builder of the OE has always recommended, you know, pull the rear forward, push the rear back to get a looser tight condition out of it. And I just, he, it works. A lot of his cars win like that. I just, my ass don't like it. <laughs> yeah. really what it comes the thing, down to. Yeah. The thing you got to adjust for yourself is that once you get out straight, you just not, you remember just to have a little more right turn to it when you go down you, straight away. But, but the thing is, at Langley, it shouldn't matter because you're almost a complete circle the whole time. But the thing is, I, especially with a modified, with a late model stock car, I, I, I did it, or even my super late back in the day, where I, you know, I did it a couple times and it, and it would really work well. But I had, you had a tire, you know, then you could it, it either roll on. asphalt out with yeah. a tire. With a modified, it's got such a small, soft tire that I'm very, very sensitive to the yaw on the car and save the right rear, save the right rear, save the right rear. It's just, it's, that's my whole thing is do not spin the tires. Do not spin the tires. Because there are times where you'll need to spin them to make that move, and if you're just doing it when you're not forcing a move, you, you, you feel like you're burning the tire. When you put that, that built-in yaw in a car, I find I'm coming out of the pedal to try and get the car to go straight. It just it, it messes with basically it messes with my kinesthetic sense. Yeah. I feel like I'm sliding. Because you're old and school not. and that's what you're used to. And when I get that thing pointed straight, I want it to go straight. Straight. Yeah, and you don't I, want to. You don't want, want a dog walk. If I wanted to dog walk, I push the pedal down more. If I yep. want to straighten up, I come back up on the pedal. Yeah, yep. You know, and if it doesn't get the full, it doesn't get the full. You know, that's, and that's that's how you drive it. But uh, Darren asked a question there on the. Uh, he said, "What, what do I think the best thing was that happened to me to date that's helped me become the racer that I am?" Um, growing up watching the greats, you know, Richard Petty was always my idol. Uh, Richie Evans was my idol. Richie Evans is my number one idol. You know, uh, he just the man could do. Both of them could do very similar styles. They were both very patient. Uh, be there at the end. Um, very rarely, if ever, see them knock anybody out of the way. Hard, uh, hard, hardcore racers, though. That's hard, what they did. Hardcore racers, yeah. and they're very, very good at it. Yeah. And just having great mentors in my corner. My uh, my dad was a, was a very good race car driver. Styled very, very differently from mine. Um, he wasn't uh, he wasn't dirty. He wasn't a guy to knock. He wasn't a bumper run kind of guy. But three wide off a of turn four was. For, with the checkers waving, it was <laughs> infield like, or yep. checker. Yeah. Dad knew screw second was Dad's motto. <laughs> and then uh, I had a very, uh, I had an old modified racer that raced throughout the 50s and the 60s. And he, one of the guys that finally ran out of money in the 70s, and that by the name of Mike Rubino. And uh, he was just a, and he was a bump and run. He'd kill you, you know. <laughs> but but he could get a car <coughs> on a racetrack. And just listening to him give me input on how to drive the car, and, you know, be, especially being a young racer like yourself, yeah. you know. And Mike was a little sawed off. Little five foot four stump kind of a guy. Eddie Johnson style. He, he was, yes. Yeah, but he was as why he was a stump of a guy. Don't <laughs> take no crap from that guy. Go out there and bury him in the fence, kid. You know, <laughs> Mike, I don't want to crash. Listen to me. Go out and wreck him. You know, it's like I didn't take all his advice, but he did teach me how to yeah. make a car go faster on a racetrack. You know, 
Well, yeah. considering after you put somebody in the wall, they're going to be trying to chase your ass down. You Not if you do it right. Yeah. If you do it right, it takes them a couple of weeks to come back. <laughs> but when they come back, they're going to come a But little yeah. he did teach me how to do that, and at certain places I had, was forced to do it, and I became very good at it, and I just don't like doing it. It's not my kind of race, and I don't want to do it. It's, it it's, and when it comes yeah. to that extent, we've ta you've taken the fun out of the game. It's gone overboard. Yep. Did you ever run into that problem, Trevor? Where? Where? <laughs> Trevor, where? <laughs> you say? How hey. you doing tonight? Uh, pretty good. Just got to watch the wheel and race on TV. Who won? Uh, Ryan Newman. Ah, he came back, huh? Yeah, he came back and he pretty much stomped him. Saw that one coming. Well, yeah. he was leading when we were watching. There's a wreck fest early on. Is it still on? No, nah, I just it went off now. Uh, the truck set up deal's on. Did you see when I put, said there was 10 laps left? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I thought so. Yeah, Where, but the way they were going, that could have been another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was looking pretty that rough. That was like, like uh, you know, what was the Riverhead Tour race, 150 laps? I think they ran 90-something under caution. <laughs> oh, wow. We, we did, we've done that at Langley. We had a 100-lap race one night, and 231 laps were caution. Yeah, well, Trevor, Trevor and I in our last race, they had one caution, and I, I don't know, it was like 15 laps. They couldn't figure out how to line the field back up or something. That was horrible. It was taking forever. Yeah, and it was like, and all it was was a spin. It didn't even involve the tow truck. It was, you know, too many. I, I don't know. I'm not even going to begin to try and think what they did. But Trevor wound up winning a race, so congrats to him. we got Trevor Edwards on the line with us. Uh, Trevor, go ahead and uh, give those that don't know you a little bit of bio about yourself, how you got into racing, and uh, what you're looking at doing now, and what you hope to be doing later. I'm Trevor Edwards. I'm 18. I'm from a small town right side of Lowell, Kentucky, Trevorsville, Kentucky. Uh, I race modified full time and then super late models for three races this year. And uh, my dad actually got me into racing. He was he actually might be in a truck the rest of the year. So, it, <laughs> and uh, Did he get that truck deal? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. They're not starting at Bristol, but I think they're going to go to Atlanta. Oh, that's pretty cool. Good deal. Good deal. Tell him I said hi and congratulations. Best of luck. I was in Bristol, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> are you Are you going down to Bristol? I'm thinking about it. I might call in, tell the guy I'm not coming to work tomorrow. I'm going to Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's not watching now in case you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell him I'm sick. I'm going to tell him I'm going to Bristol. <laughs> sick of work. <laughs> I'm, call, I'm calling him busy. How many busy days do I get at this job? Just too busy to come to work today. Uh, One. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, tell us about South Boston. How'd that go with the uh, with the Super League? Sounds like you're running decent, but it must have been a bear to drive. Uh, well, we all we did was race runs and practice. We got the car really good for the race, and I never really I've never been in a Super Late model, so qualifying was completely different. And I drove it like a modified, which was a dumb mistake. So what's the difference? Uh, Wait, stop there for a second. What's the difference between driving at Super Late and driving a modified? Modified, you got to be more there in qualifying and kind of keep your little bit of momentum up. The Super Late model, you drive it off in there, stomp the brake, turn it, and back to the mat. A lot more tire. Oh, yeah. Ten yeah. inches of tire. That two inches of tire each way, eight inches total. That's a big deal. That's another tire. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. That's like a fifth tire for a modified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ended up, I uh, started the race 24th, and in 15 laps we drove, I drove up to 14th or so, I think is what it was. Nice. Uh, the first caution, we're sitting there, and I'm scrubbing tires, and all of a sudden the steering got real hard. I was steering quit on lot 15. And, uh. Rack and pinion? Uh, no, it was a, uh, servo went bad. No, no, I mean, is it a rack and pinion or a steering box in that car? It's rack and pinion, but the servo ended up, I think it's what ended up breaking. Steering servo, yeah. yeah. And then, uh. Apparently it's pizza oh, time here. We got a, Thank you. I drove up to about 10th. And, uh. Right before that, and then afterwards it was a handful for sure. How much of a bear was that to drive? I mean, it wasn't as bad as everybody thinks they are when you lose power steering, but I was also using the apron to get it to turn. But when I did, if I used too much of the apron... Oh. It, it'd jerk it back right, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was so hard to hurt, turn back right. Turning left wasn't hard, but yeah. coming up off the corners, you got to get used to it. How or turning back right. You had to make a pit stop or a caster change. <laughs> oh, we didn't make any pit stops. I wish we would have. <laughs> How many laps did you run? Um... Without power steering, 120 or 110. Mm. And then uh, about lap 134, we're running 10th. And uh, 
a lap down, got around sixth place and fifth place, and drove away from them actually. So, I mean, the car was really good, even though we didn't have a power steering. And then lap 134, the radiator cap blew off. <laughs> so, basically, all that hard work was for nothing. <laughs> And you probably didn't have the arm strength at that point to put the cap back on. <laughs> yeah, if they would have poured water in it, I would have went and finished it. Because they asked, like, do you think you could have finished? I said, oh, hell yeah. I kept on looking at the board, and I was like, one lap down. One more. One more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you like what, watching a clock. D doing, I, I mean, I've done it myself. I've had a power steering come loose and drive around with Armstrong for about 90 laps out of a 100 lap race. It, it is not fun, but it, it can be done. If your car is already doing good for turning in the corners, it's not so bad. It's just when you have to take and dodge wrecks, things like that, when you have to make drastic yeah. moves. They don't even want to get into dodging wrecks without power steering. That's right. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. These guys are wimps, ain't they? I don't have we, power we, Yeah, we, we've never had power steering. No. Yeah, but you See, set the car up like that. Yeah, and you got a little light. I've driven manual steering. You, you set the car up like that. Cars, what the heck? When you set it up with power steering <laughs> and you lose the power steering, you're in a world of hurt. Quarter scale size cars. What do you expect? So, uh, Trevor, that was your first time in a late model, right? That was my first time ever in a full body stock car, a full size car with fenders. Was it easier or harder than you thought it was going to be? Uh, it was about. I mean, I pretty much expected it. It was. We need a different mentality when you jump into a super light model from a modified. Yeah, I'm, I would imagine. There's that. not really. It's pretty much on pace laps. Tony goes, well, about whatever time the green flag starts, that's when you need to start going for the lead. So it's just going to get wild out there. So just yeah. try to survive, basically. We only put, I only got one mark on the car, so came back and rolled back in the trailer. Yeah. Radiator cap left. That's a good night. That's, good. That, that's a very good night. That's a good night. That, <clears throat> finished the race with all fenders on it, but... We didn't finish the race, but everything was left on it, so we're ready to go back pretty much. Where are you racing next? Uh, we're thinking about going to Hickory or Orange County. We're not sure which one we're going to try to go to. That's cool. I hope we go to Hickory because Hickory, I've got a thousand laps around that place, and the other day we were running pretty pretty quick on old tires. Now, when is that race? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I think it's October 14th or something like that. It's the middle of October, I believe. I got you. Uh, we went there the other day just to kind of shake down the car and figure out what kind of shocks we wanted to put on for South Boston. And uh, last year's pole time there was a 1480, and on 120-lap tires, I was running 15 threes. So, oh, you're right there. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Really good, actually. So I guess you guys aren't headed to uh, Old Dominion this week. I heard they canceled due to the, uh, they had the hurricane. hurricane. Yeah, evidently there's a hurricane coming. I'm going there this weekend. But uh, our next race is October 1st at Bristol. We're running the Modifieds at Bristol now. Wow, is that definite? Cool. Really? Yep. I'm pretty excited about that one. Yeah, Rolling Thunder was, uh, they had a race scheduled for for Hickory as uh, an ISCAR support class, I believe. And then um, I guess there's a big show going on at Bristol the same weekend, which is, what, what, what date is that, Trevor? Is that October 1st? October 1st, they have like a charity event. Uh, two main events is going to be the Rolling Thunder Modifieds, and then they have uh, Super Wing sprint cars there. Oh, that'd be worth watching. Oh, I'm going to watch gonna... that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, sprint cars. Bristol. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Did you see that cat that set the world record there? In a Super 1364? Mod? No, in a sprint car. Would wow. a sprint car beat the Super Mod? Yeah. Really? With the Super Mod. Really? Wow. That's Thir 1364, around. I think, is what he turned there. That's flying around Bristol. He went out. Bristol is going to be our last, the last race, I think, for the uh, modified this year. The modified that is, and I think I have to finish fifteenth or better, or tenth or better, and I'll win the championship or something like that. Wow, cool. Well, stay out of trouble. Congratulations. So we're not going to get to see you up uh, up at Langley. Uh, we're planning on coming here soon. Whenever Joe or he gets the race set up there, we'll definitely come to it, and then uh, we might just come up there and run one for fun up there. Well, you know you guys can park the rig at our shop and just crash at the house, so, you know, we'll make it a little cheaper for you there. I know it's a haul coming up from, uh, you guys are right outside of Concord, right? Uh, yeah, it's about, I think it's about a five-hour drive for us. Yeah. But, uh, the only other races I know that we're running this year is we're probably going to go down to Mobile and Pensacola for a race or two. Are you coming up here for the Labor Day deal? Uh, we're not, I'm not even sure, really, to be honest with you. Uh, Dad kind of does the whole schedule deal. I just get the car and go. Well, they clean it up, make sure it's all ready to go, and 
Go drive. Let's play through all I do now. Yeah, that's all well, I guess to do. Now he shows up, hops in, and they there, tell him where to go. There is potentially one more race out there that's not on anybody's schedule yet because it's the division that I'm trying to put together. Or it's the division that I am putting together. We're just trying to get enough people to go out and do it. But we're looking at potentially October 8th. We're trying to get a date over Orange County. We've been discuss in discussions with them. And that's I mean, your car on a cheap tire. The cars. The car owner said whenever you're having a race, we're going to be at it. So there'll be two cars that you can cancel or uh, pencil in. Outstanding. Thanks for the support. That's great. So, like I said, I'm trying to uh, – been uh, in discussions with Shenandoah Speedway and uh, Orange County and just trying to get them to, uh, you know, let us come and, mm -hmm. come and race. I love Shenandoah. It's just – it's such a nice facility. And then Orange County, I love I that place too. We were going to try and put a race together there for September 24th. But, and, and congratulations to uh, Rusty Wood's daughter, Shannon, who's getting married that weekend and took half my field. So we, I, I proposed having a race at the reception, which I think she would have been fine with. <laughs> but uh, like I had, I think, seven cars confirmed, and, and three or four of them said, uh, <laughs> we're going to the wedding. One being her brother, one being her dad, and one being a very close friend of the family. So I was like, bye. You know, we could probably go up there with 10 cars. I probably still could have got 10 cars. But, uh, you know, being kind of close and we haven't done the tire test or anything yet, mm -hmm. I said, let's uh, push it back a little let's bit. Push let's push back. Sure, yeah, let's, let's, let's. I told Dad what we need to do is we need to find a race where driver and crew chief get to swap at halfway. Oh, I, I saw a crew chief race in the Modifieds in East Carolina a couple of years back. And, oh, it was bad. Oh, it was all bad. Now, your crew chief, your crew chief, that's, that's an ace in the hole. That's cheap. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's cheap. your crew yeah. chief's a cra is a uh, uh, Camel World truck racer, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, you got a little advantage. Case up the. I'm gonna sleeve. put Mac. First of all, I'd have to pry Mac in the seat because he's about twice my size. <laughs> <laughs> Can he fit in there? Uh, I I think he tried squeezing in there one night uh, when I wasn't there, and he managed to get in and get out. And then uh, my spotter Andy got in a '93 car, and, and <laughs> sorry I didn't video it or <laughs> I wasn't even there. But I heard uh, he, he was a little stuck. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I got to race against guys like Trevor and Anthony. So I got, I got, a, I got a foot on the. I'm 6'2". I got to somehow stay competitive. So I try to watch my weight as much as possible. Thanks for the pizza, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, fit right you're running in, home, it? though, right? Well, if I hit 185, the crew throws stuff at me. I got, you know. <laughs> I'll trade you for some weight if you want to, you know. A little bit of your weight. I need to pack something on. Get some more left side weight or something. Yeah, but that's what lead's for. And if you're really on a high dollar team, it's tungsten. You know, if I had a choice between an apple pie and a hunk of tungsten, I'll take the tungsten. Every day. Apple pie. See, yeah. And what do you weigh? I love apple pie. But uh, what do you weigh, Trevor? He just weighs a buck five. How much do you weigh, Trevor? One thirty. One thirty. I was gonna say closer to one thirty. One thirty. He got forty He's pounds. He's got a fifty pound advantage over my skin. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you just you can always do make the cars weigh with the driver. Well, we do, but the difference is. I'm all weighed up here, and, and he's, you know, he's 130 pounds. You suck him but, down low in the seat, put two blocks of lead under his butt, he just became the same weight as me with a center of gravity. Well, you know what NASCAR started doing? What's that? They weigh the cars, Yeah. then they weigh the drivers, and they make them put lead by the seats. I mean, they used to do it. I don't know if I'd they're still doing sure it or not. I'd have to make wear a lead vest yeah. and sit yeah. in a phone book. They, that. they still do it? <laughs> yep, they have to, they weigh the car, and then they weigh who has and they may make them put that weight. It's right on the seat, isn't it, Trevor? Or underneath the seat? I'm not sure. I think you're actually allowed to put it wherever you want as long as the car weighs that much and has the right less that percentage. Yeah. Yeah, but and I mean, they you make put you put that, put that, that around the moment center. I mean, which was like, you know, uh, you know, years back, uh, they had the big complaints about Danica and Indy because they were weighing the cars without the drivers, and Danica weighs like, what, 110, yeah. 115 well, pounds. Yeah, NASCAR was doing that too. Right, and it is, you know, it's, it's an advantage. Yeah, it is, yeah. You know, and the only way you could balance out, I mean, you got Danica Patrick in a car, and you got Jimmy Spencer, or, you know, somebody Buddy Baker sized in a car. And there's a hundred Because there's no big guys difference. left. Yeah, you know, none whatsoever. You'd have to have, I mean, to make that Mark, even. Elliot Sadler, I think, is the biggest Well, one. I mean, to balance out, make it even for somebody Jimmy Spencer size, you'd have to have Mark Martin sit on Jeff Gordon's lap. Elliot Sadler's taller than Newman. Yeah, Elliot Sadler's a pretty big guy. He's a pretty big guy. Elliot and but Newman's pretty good size. Tony's, Tony's short. Tony's sprint car built. He's built. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like a, he's, a, he's a stump. Yeah, he's like Steve Kinzer. All, all of them sprint car guys are. 
Why do you need to be durable? You got to have the, the uh, you take the punishment of a linebacker. David Ruderman's yeah. a tall guy. Yeah. Pretty tall guy. Mikey was probably the tallest one to get in the car. We just keep laying. Uh, well, yeah, Mike Michael Walter was was a tall one to get in the car, but I think Buddy Baker had him beat. But Buddy Baker ran more back in the day where it was, you know, man and machine kind of thing. Where they had a huge greenhouse. Get, get up on the get up <laughs> yeah. on the steering wheel and, and horse it around and Yep. Another tall one's Kyle Bush. I mean, I don't think really a disadvantage for him. He's pretty much space. Yeah, but he's a skinny mini. I mean he don't weigh yeah. nothing. He might be tall, you know, and Kurt's actually packed on a little bit of weight, but he's that tall, too. You know, he's probably around your size, 6'2". Six, six I don't think anybody in his cups was still, like, yeah, aside from Kyle, Michael Walter, I don't think anybody's over really six foot anymore. Yeah. They're right there. It's just getting dark outside, so yeah. it looked a little funny. Everybody's a little twitchy in the area now. Uh, Trevor, did you get the earthquake the other yeah. day? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, an earthquake come in, and which interrupted my hurricane preparedness. <laughs> I went to Home Depot. Where's the volcano? That's what I want to know. Where's there a volcano brewing that I need to just move away from? I went, I went to uh, Home Depot yesterday morning. There That's a four... place I don't want to be in an earthquake. Well, a lot yeah. of big stuff up high. No, yeah. there was four people in line with me already buying generators. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a good investment because you can sell them for like five grand next week. <laughs> there was a company in your town that got busted doing that. Yeah, but I mean, what do you, do you want a generator? But yeah, but see, the <laughs> it's thing gonna is, cost you. There yeah. are some laws, you know, for people to. It's just like when you go out and buy all the tickets up and for a race, and you got to come there and you got to pay three times the amount. Well, uh, why you can't scalp a generator? Scalping. I know you can't scalp a ticket for more than face value. No, it's not considered scalping. So it's if I got a generator um, running in my house and the power's out, and somebody walks huh? up and says, "I'll buy it off you," and Price I tell them five grand yeah. for the six hundred dollar used generator, uh, probably, that's against the law. That, 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 that's not against the law. It wasn't it's, even for sale a minute ago. It, it's for going out and, and purposely buying like five or ten of them, and then a hoarding, and uh, then yeah, going okay. and Price to gouging. Sell them for, yeah. Yeah, but if you're not a business, then... It was funny the other day during the earthquake. I was at the yeah. mall shop while working, and there's a rock quarry down the road. I thought it was... Everybody in the shop was like, oh, it's just a rock quarry blast. I was like, it's an earthquake. It's blasting away today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was sitting there, and I was in all serious. And, like, he comes in, he goes, did y'all feel the earthquake? And we all started laughing. I was like, I wonder if my trophies at the shop are okay. And everybody busted out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, I mean, I was listening to a couple of people they talked to on TV, the... Uh, over there by the uh, the lake right there. Uh, uh, they were talking about they were working on the boat pier because he builds boat piers. Right. They felt the earthquake. He was in there, you know, bouncing around on the boat pier, hanging on. Was that Lake Anna you're talking about? Yeah. And yeah. They, right they said, all of a sudden, here comes a two-foot wave at him. They said they jumped off that thing, hopped in a truck, and hauled ass because they didn't know what the hell was going <laughs> That is a on. Louisa County tsunami. That's two right. feet of water. <laughs> two feet of water. <laughs> two feet of water. The tsunami. It's like a tsunami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hey, well, you know, I, th I thought about that, too, because it was, you know, we got the big rumble. It was like, hey, that was fun. And I was like, hey, where did it really start? And uh, where's oh, the nearest? another one? Japan flashbacks. Where's the nearest reactor? I'm like yeah. between two of them, you know? Well, did you see what it did to the Washington Monument? It took that chip off it, or something. Right? Yeah, it cracked, it cracked it clear up at the top. About uh, eight tenths of the way up. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's something movies are made out of. And uh, Mineral, Virginia is where it the epicenter of it was. Right about seven miles out of it. Yeah, but minerals like the size of this room. Yeah. So, you know, if you broke everything in mineral, it, you could clean it up with a dust. Well, it did you know, some heavy damage small, up there. Yeah, I mean, it's a it, small, it, small town. But it did some serious uh, damage. Yeah, what's a, is it Warrington or something? It's, it's probably the next right sizable there. town right yeah. there. That's, that's up north of it, yeah. That got, uh, it, there was another town around it that has a little yeah. bit of, like a population that's probably beyond four yeah. digits. <laughs> so we got Robert Richardson also on the line. Robert, we were also talking about the the earthquake since we were in the middle of it uh, yesterday. Yeah, well, I see you guys are still alive. I've been. <laughs> Where I've, are you at? I'm in uh, Texas. You know, there's, there's nothing. There's not any earthquakes going on out here, but it's definitely hot as hell and it's windy and dusty. So they got the drought. The hurricane's on the way. We just had the earthquake. Yeah. And hopefully the fires get put out in the dismal swamp. Yeah. What was that 2012 rumor? I keep saying that. <laughs> Should I be praying by, or by a few months? Confessing something? I, I don't know. <laughs> Where's the locust? The earth is near. <laughs> Yesterday morning they had the storms that ran through the Midwest. 
right at, at night. So I called my mom and I said, "Are you okay?" You know, I called her about seven o'clock her time. She's right. like, "Oh, I slept right through it, fine and dandy." Well, then the earthquake hits, and she calls me up. And she says, "There's never been a major disaster that you haven't missed yet. You've been through ah, the fires. Do you see you've the been common the denominator? Tor- tornadoes, Don't hang around the now. hurricanes." <laughs> that- now you've done the earth. My theory is you are the Antichrist, <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to bring the end of days. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, why not? You've been through them all now. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, we got Robert. We got Robert on the phone. And we're stepping all over because <laughs> yeah, we can't stop babbling. So. Well, now hold on. He's down in Texas. He knows what the tornadoes are, don't you? Well, I mean, right now it sounds like a massive. He's talking in there through tin can. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't really hear what everybody was asking there at one time, I guess. Uh, who's the first person? What, what's the first question you want to ask? You've been through the tornadoes down there, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've had plenty of tornadoes and all sorts of you know, bad storms out here. And, you know, during the spring, we get a lot of flooding and things of that nature. But, you know, heck, I mean, most of Texas is just... You know, praying for any kind of rain right now. It hasn't rained here in, in months. Uh, it's been over 100 degrees here every day for probably two or three months. That's a record high of how many 100 degree days they've had here in Texas. So this is officially the hottest summer you know, that Texas has ever recorded out here. So wow. pretty bad. That's not a weather condition. That's a reason to move. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we uh, had the race up in Watkins Glen uh, a few weeks ago, and I went up there and, and spotted for Alex Kennedy, who was driving the 23 car that weekend. It was in the 70s and, and nice and cloudy and beautiful country out there. I'm going, good Lord, what am I still doing in Texas? <laughs> you know, I, I still wouldn't trade this state for anything else in the world. I mean, I've, I've grown up out here and just have a ball living out here. It is actually a beautiful state. I, I know you guys are going through the drought, and some people are going through the the rain, and we're going through everything down here. <laughs> I had one Texas Hell experience. I ran down. off the end of the runway in a commercial jet. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> we were in the grass. <laughs> let, let, let's let let's let Trevor go ahead and get off of here. I'm sure he's got things he wants to do. Probably go Wait, back to i racing. I got one real quick question for Trevor. Trevor, can can you tell us about the uh, the the Relationship you have going with the firefighters? Uh, USFD Racing. Uh, they, what we what we've been doing this year is that every race we have two or three firefighters come and just hang out with us, be honorary crew members. And uh, at Motor Mile, we actually got every firefighter from around to get in free if they showed a proper ID. So we're kind of starting to raise awareness about volunteer firefighters and how important they really are to us. And we're actually going to start doing some more from tours of our houses and fire conventions and stuff. It's just kind of a raising awareness for the volunteer firefighters. Excellent, excellent. And your next race is where and when? October 1st at Bristol. October 1st at Bristol. Head on down there. Support Trevor Edwards, the firefighters, and with a little luck, cross the fingers, your first championship? Yep, my first ever championship. You ran runner-up last year, rookie of the year in Rolling Thunder Modified Series, and this year you're uh, you're going for the gold. Best of luck to you, buddy. Proud of you. I was telling Dad this year, I was like, at Newport we won our first poll, and I was like, Dad, do you realize this is the first poll I've ever got after qualifying? Jeez. And he goes, it really is your first poll ever. <laughs> yeah, but you won there the year before. That's better than the pole position. <laughs> and then I won there this year, too, so that made it pretty sweet. There you go. All right, we'll get on out of here, and uh, we'll be looking for you. We might have to make a trip for that. If we ain't got another race going on, we need to make a trip there. I already told Dad. I said, I got a chip in my pocket or something like five grand, because if I win, I'm doing some freaking donuts. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. All right, Trevor, get on out of here. Go back to iRacing, and we'll be catching with you soon. All right, thank you. We might be meeting Trevor on iRacing here shortly. (laughs) (laughs) Now, he's on line one. Me on. Robert, up. Robert, you there? I'm still here. Okay, we're just BSing tonight, so what do we got going on in Robert Richardson's world? Well, uh, lately I've just been working uh, for my mom here in my hometown of McKinney, Texas. Uh, her steel fabrication business at McKinney Pipe and Steel, just helping her out and uh, a lot of customers coming in here lately. And 
just helping out around the shop and, and helping them clean and organize and, and help customers when they walk in the door. So, uh, staying pretty busy with that, but uh, still you know, keeping in touch with everything that's been going on with the race team out there in Charlotte. And uh, Alex Kennedy's been racing the past two road course races for us. Uh, decent run at Watkins Glen. Uh, it wasn't so fortunate this past weekend that Montreal, but. Uh, you know, all in all, it's just, it's just been a really rough year uh, for R3 Motorsports and not not just our team, but a lot of the other teams out there as well. Just as far as trying to find a sponsorship and funding and and just trying to make it through the end of this season where you can try to, you know, regroup over the winter and, and you know, start all over again with a clean slate in February for Daytona. So everybody's just, you know, trying to you know, get enough nickels and dimes together to finish out the rest of the season and, and just check it off and, and leave it in the past. Are, are you um, are you planning on racing here again shortly? Uh, my next race will be at Atlanta. Uh, not sure if I will be at Richmond. Uh, that's in the plans. You know, we're definitely going to be racing that week. But uh, we're talking to a young man right now who may be uh, interested in running Richmond for us. So, uh, regardless, you know, I'll probably be there. But if, uh, if that deal falls through, then more than likely I will be racing at Richmond. And we want to see you get another step up on the high mark that you've gotten so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, i got to have my whole good luck crew show up for that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you guys are some good mojo. I'm going to have to use a little bit more of it uh, when we come back there. Good deal. Yeah, we got to remember to uh, Joey Meyer and Brad Keselowski. Every, we've been doing good mojo for them every week since we've had them on the show. And guess what? He ain't finished, what, worse than third? Well, don't don't be using it all up now. No, uh, we ain't gonna use it all up. <laughs> oh, we got plenty for you, Robert. Spread Blazing. it out. Spread oh, it out. Weekend, he's gonna get sucky because we're gonna give it all to you. And for yeah, just uh, Joey actually used to spot for me when uh, we just started our three motorsports. And Joey's a, an awesome spotter, and uh, you know it goes to show with uh, you know some of the finishes that you know Brad's been getting in the Nationwide Series, also in the Cup Series. So. Uh, Joey's helped me out a tremendous bit. Joey's helping out Brad. Uh, right now, I have Jimmy Kitchens uh, spotting for me on the nationwide side, and he actually spots for Ryan Newman on the Cup side, and, and he's been a big help as well. So, uh, you know, it's not always about the drivers. You know, you got to have listen to that guy in your ear when you're going down to the racetrack, and he can tell you where you're messing up and, and where other guys could be uh, getting an advantage. Know, and then he re- relays that information to you as well, and you try it out. And sometimes you, you know, get better, and sometimes you don't. But you don't know if you don't listen to the best part. That's it. I'll have to get up with you later on and get Jimmy's uh, info. I, I've known him, jeez, uh, long time ago, back when he was doing some racing, and then uh, met him and uh, visited with him for a while up in Richmond. And then uh, got away from being able to keep up with him, so it'd be cool to have him back on, the, get him on the show. Yeah, he's an he's an awesome guy. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade Jimmy for anything in the world. He's a great coach, a great spotter, and a, and a great friend. I'm sure that maybe we can exchange some information here after the show, and uh, I can shoot you his phone number. You might be able to have him on your show. That'd be cool. Yeah. You got any questions? Come on, speak now. What? Where? What's What's next? Where are we at? <laughs> That's always what I want to know. Where's the fans on the We got internet? a deaf guy in the corner and a speakerphone way over there. I, you know. <laughs> Atlanta. Atlanta, outstanding. But uh, So who's going to be driving the car next? He doesn't know yet. Uh, uh, Bristol, uh, I think I believe we're going to probably have to result in a, a starting park effort there. Uh, but we will be racing Atlanta, Richmond, Kansas. And uh, Texas, Phoenix, and Homestead, I think, are the races that we have penciled in to race. You know, but again, uh, you know, if the proper amount of funding comes in and, and we create some relationships with people who, who want to get into NASCAR and, and see how everything works in NASCAR, so, you know, those races can change. We might be able to race every race for the remainder of the season but as of now those are the races that we have penciled in to run out and finish out the rest of this year now is there i know you haven't done it uh but just i think just once this year running the cup series 
What uh, What do you think you got planned coming on for that? Do you got anything possibly this year, or are you going to be waiting until next year? No, if I do anything, it'll definitely be next season. Um, you know, we we're definitely focused on on getting our nationwide series uh, team more stable and uh, and running solid every week. Uh, we've recently gone through a lot of motor updates on our engine program and has picked up the, the amount of horsepower and, and torque dramatically from horsepower. we've run in the past. Heard that. <laughs> and torque. It's different. And torque. <laughs> what we're used to running, but it's, uh, I mean, we're definitely capable of running in between the top 15 and top 20 every single weekend. Now, did you get the email about how to make the little miniature JTO package to hook underneath the chassis there? Oh, man. I don't think I have. Oh, man. I didn't get that one either. What are you talking about, Raj? Genesis, the takeoff unit. They give you a burst about 30 seconds. I'm okay with that. Good, good little pass strategy. You fire them up. It, do, it doesn't do anything like adding nitro to the car or nothing. It's we separate. tried that with model rocket engines a couple of years back. It didn't work out well. They're like that, except a lot more <laughs> powerful. They actually use them for uh, jet aircraft. Uh, with get the, them off the carriers? Yeah, get them off carriers or on short fields where right. they're, they're heavily loaded. And, I mean, that's some kick-ass thrust, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't come with a break, does it? No. no. <laughs> you, once you light it, it's going. Probably something you want to experiment with, maybe Michigan or Talladega. <laughs> Martinsville, oh, it's going to be bad. <laughs> you hit the end of the turn, you're going to keep going? Yeah. <laughs> the hell, if you win the race, hell, they can find me out of the car. Save it for turn four, last lap. <laughs> there you go. We won, but we can't find them now. <laughs> Don't stick your hand outside and give it any extra lift, because you might just yeah. stay off. off and <laughs> take out the water tower. Beat that. <laughs> All right, what do we got? We're down to Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner type cartoon now, right? Hey, there's a lot to be learned from the Acme product line. <laughs> Did you ask? <laughs> if Wiley Coyote wasn't such a non-driving so-and-so, I mean, he'd have caught that Roadrunner. He would have caught that Roadrunner. <laughs> Did, did you ever watch the Mythbusters when they, they tried? You, you heard the story. Of what? Of the, the guys that, that strapped four Jitto rockets to the top of their car, and it disappeared into the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> because it disintegrated. Was it a Buckaroo Banzai? I <laughs> yeah, think I saw of, that movie. Kind of like that. They, <laughs> they, they tried it. They put Jado rockets on the top of this car right. and turned it loose. Remote controlled. And never saw it again. <laughs> and it took and, off. And what myth did we bust with that? that it, it, whether it was true or that not, that they could do it. if you strap four rockets capable of taking an aircraft off a very short runway and put them on a small car, it, it, you will never find it again. Yeah. I think they planned it, though, so it would not go into the mountain. I, they probably planned it so that they wouldn't have to clean it up. Hey, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there ain't much to clean up after the Because, personally, if I mountain. light those things off, I'm going to run like hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody finds nothing with my fingerprints on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, talking about chasing roadrunners, down there in Texas, how hard is it? <laughs> like I usually make a habit of chasing our... our uh, Runners out here, but occasionally you'll chase an armadillo every once in a while. But <laughs> I don't think I'm fast. For us Virginians, that's an armored possum. That's right, a possum <laughs> or a raccoon up here. Oh yeah. But uh, well, yes, Anthony, there is such a thing as a road runner. It is an actual bird. Duh! Google it was it. a Plymouth made in the seventies. Really? Yeah, <laughs> they were really hard to pass because they were huge. Richard Petty and those guys used to. And heavy. You could knock that thing out of the way with a little Camaro. I is. tried. <laughs> you guys must be really bored tonight, talking about Roadrunners and everything else in the world. Oh, yeah, we're wide open uh, This is just the standard lunacy. It doesn't really change. It's just we air it every now and then. We have, we have one good night. It's good to have a good fun time with everything. You know how that can be. Now, if you really want to know the truth... We don't. We did not watch hardly any racing last weekend. We're not caught up on the news that's been playing hurricanes and earthquakes. So yeah, we're going to be bullshitting all night. <laughs> been busy hiding and taking cover, right? That's it. Yeah. The only, the only race we know is what we did on Saturday night, and who wants to sit here and talk about me, 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 me all night? In the Aside fire. From I'm me, sorry. I, you know. In the fire. We've been waking up to smoke every oh. morning. Down in the fire. Yeah, uh, you guys got the fire down yeah. here, but the hurricane's going to come and put that out, providing Hopefully. that part of we the country hope. doesn't yeah. fall off from the earthquake. Really? <laughs> yeah. and, and Terry was talking about having front beach property shortly once we drop in the ocean. Well, if it does well, fall in the ocean, I mean, think of the dust cloud it'll make in Texas. 
<laughs> well, no, it'll give Things it a tsunami. Bad. We should be it'll give it a tsunami. Shouldn't we be tunneling or looting or something right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, no, it'll Grab the PCs, let's go. It's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a tsunami, and then they won't have a drought. They'll have a flood. And a pool. <laughs> and a big pool. Texas will be all of Texas beachfront. <laughs> That's right. And you're, are you down by the coast, Robert? No, I'm uh, around Dallas, Fort Worth, but if things keep going the way they will be, I might be on the coast. Next year, or so yeah, that's what we were talking you about. You got any yeah. real estate for sale? You're out your way. <laughs> <laughs> Something maybe on top of a hill. <laughs> well, I, I, Texas is pretty flat, so even if just one good wave came across Texas, it'd pretty much take out everything. Yeah, it, it, it would go clear to Oklahoma, wouldn't we'll, it? We'll buy three really? lots together and pile two of them on one. There you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a thinker. <laughs> Build your own Sears Tower or something else. Right. Well, no, you don't want to build a tower. Look what happened to the Washington well, Monument. I'm sure a lot of the rednecks out here are probably just getting their deer stands. And, you know, and yeah. <laughs> you just, <laughs> I can just the image of the whole family yeah. up there <laughs> waiting for a deer to swim by. Yeah. <laughs> here you go. Transplant some sequoias. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, it's going See downhill you're fast. Tonight, it's Robert? going downhill fast. <laughs> and you thought we were going to talk racing with you, right? Ah, uh, hell, I mean, been kind of uneventful around our camp. You know, just been the same same routine for the past couple of weeks, just going and racing and and uh, you know getting all we can we can for the you know past couple of weeks. But um, definitely looking forward to, to winding down the rest of the season and. Just focusing solely on on updating everything over the winter and you know, getting ready for the 2012 season. Are you going to stay with Dodge? No, uh, we actually have currently converted all of our vehicles over to Chevrolet. Oh, really? Man, I didn't know that. Chevy's the best. The bow tie. The bow tie thing. Well, now as far as 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 power wise, what's uh what what seems to be the the, the biggest baddest piece? I mean, Chevys are always notoriously the best bang for the buck, but I know, like, you know, the stuff we run, if you could if you could afford to put a Dodge or a Ford together, it would make more power. Yeah, I mean, it's all up to each team and, and what manufacturer that they decide to go with, but, you know, we started out this season uh, with the Dodge package, and cars look great, they look awesome. I wasn't really getting any sort of backing or support from the manufacturer, and... Gotcha. We've always had a good relationship with Chevrolet and, and everybody over there, and they've always helped us out with, you know, parts and pieces and and anything that we really needed. And uh, just decided to cut all the noses and tails off of our Dodges and convert them all back over to Chevrolet. Cool. <clears throat> well. Oh, cool. you got. Yeah, I mean, cool. you got to go where the support is. You know. You, yeah, you, yeah, you, you really do. Don't, don't don't pick a brand and leave yourself out there in the breeze if nobody's going to back you up. I mean, obviously that's the. And that's a good decision in the long run. It's it's probably a, a more economical decision if you you know if you get the, the the backing from the from the manufacturer. Yep, that's right. Hey, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's it. Yeah. The way the world works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's it. Scratchy back, scratchy back. <laughs> Out here, it's just shaky pudding. I don't know. I have no comment for that. I, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm at a loss for that. You got to see the Burt Reynolds movie when he was a moon runner, a moonshine runner. Uh, and, uh, I've seen that. And, um, and, the, and the girls. W name w, was, w and the Dixie Dance right? Kings wasn't that it? Uh, where he's running shine or was no. White Lightning? White Lightning. White Lightning. Lightning and then it was Gator. 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 Was, he ran was shine was in every two. movie except for Stroke of Race. I think. No, he was a shine runner before he became an NASCAR. Oh, that's right. He was so okay. Gator, when he was Gator McCluskey. And one of the girls at the at the uh, house of nice repute, uh, her her name was. What's the show rated? I'm just I was just wondering where this was going. It's it's, uh, it's we can say anything. Oh, go ahead then. That's, uh, anyway, <laughs> house of ill repute, whatever. Uh, and that was her name. Shaky pudding. Shaky pudding. Sounds like a James Bond girl. Or an Austin no, Powers that's usually one. Pussy galore yeah, or that, something like yeah that. I couldn't believe they got away with that in the eighties too. Pussy galore was the one in the yeah. James Bond. We're just talking about a kitty cat, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an octopusy, or uh, not? Uh, octopusy was Oct the other one. <laughs> no, pussy galore was an octopusy. You know, 
Let's talk about something else. This, um, <laughs> We're just starting to get blue. Where this is going. Yeah, this, this is, is getting, getting really, really blue. We got to stop. <laughs> I mean, it's just movie Sorry, titles Robert. now. We're really bored. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I'm about to go in here and take my shaky pudding back here and take a shower here in the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad that I could be somewhat of a source of entertainment tonight. But <laughs> it's always, You've been it's great. And, and it's we... always to have you good on here. You know that. <laughs> but, uh, all right, boys, we all have a fine evening. <laughs> You too, Robert. <laughs> Try to avoid all the earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanoes and uh, hurricanes. And women running around out there. <laughs> Beware the yeah, shaky Yeah, we missed point. that. Yeah, we, we got to find that. <laughs> all right, Robert, you take care, and we'll be talking to you soon. All right, see you, boys. All right, take care. I'll, I'll try to give you a shout tomorrow and get up with you about Jimmy. All right, Robert. All right, bye-bye. See you, bud. <laughs> well, we did get <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we did. We're tired. We didn't have this discussion no, before. Yeah, we're, we're tired. Right. Working See, too this hard. This happens when you feed, get feed before you get done. You know, you get well, yeah, I have charge. an I have an excuse. You know, I've been, I've been working on a 944 course for Auto Works uh, that we're going to do some uh, probably at NASA or some SECA racing with, and I've been painting the interior. It's the fumes. Yeah. It's the fumes that so, get to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's inadvertent huffing. Right. That's my excuse. What's yours? Oh, you just sat here and laughed, and yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I must have commented on that. Well, he was over there. I got nothing to do with this. <laughs> He's not old enough to understand. Well, no, well, well, we were not <laughs> No, he's smart enough to not participate. Yeah. He needs to be a James Bond fan. You ask your dad, he will know it. Yeah, I don't know. I never watched a whole lot of James Bond, so. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've missed one yet. Well, I asked him Martin DB9. I didn't uh, get into yeah. the ones that were too special affected out, but like, uh... What was it? The uh, Casino Royale, the first one, and the remake, I thought, were, were excellent. Ooh, yeah, Casino Now we're Royale. turning to Siskel and Ebert. We're talking about James Bond. We could talk about the DB9 in the car, in, in the movie. Because yeah, that's, that's a car. So we can talk it, about it's that. a car. Yeah, I know which one you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. You, you, the you, Austin you, Martin. You've got to pronounce it the DB9. The Austin Martin. <laughs> and, and I think almost, uh, it's either been a Jaguar or it's been an Austin. I think all... Yeah, the Austin, no, he, he had, had the, the Lotus. Mustang, he had the Lotus. Yeah, that's right. He had the Lotus. I don't remember. Well, yeah, he did. Was the one that bounced across the oh, wall? Oh, the AMC Javelin when they did the roll. The, the, uh, yeah, but he wasn't driving. Was yeah, he was. That was a Javelin. That's right. Yeah, that's right. AMC Javelin. I saw the special. The 70s were awesome. Even the AMC. The manufacturer and they actually, the Pacer had a muscle car. And they actually did it. It yeah. was not CGI. Yeah. It was no, not special they effects. They did that. They flipped that sucker. They went ramp to ramp. They did a big curled ramp. And the car, as it... Came up the ramp, it jumped a gorge or like a river, Basically and did a barrel roll long. and landed on another ramp and, and, and kept uh, right on kept going. It's yeah. the same one they did the boat jump in too. And they only had one chance to do it, and they did it the first time right. Yeah, they only had two cars. Yeah, because the stunt man probably wouldn't have survived if it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> it was the canal. It was the seventies. They gave him a rope and a cigarette. And said, "Go get him, Skeeter." <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a museum in England with a lot of the props from the James Bonds. Movies. Really, it's it's one. It's like James uh, Bond Museum. Q's yeah, Bond, like Q's house. Yeah, yeah, Q's house. Yeah. So and they show. Which all I the, knew we arrived in the right place in an industrial park when we got Sweet Q. Sweet Q. 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 We Q. Got the Q. James Bond. You got it. Get inside. Start making stuff. <laughs> okay, I did get to see the new Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and they destroy a Mustang in there. Well, there's kids doing that every night. That doesn't phase me. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. We were Siskel and Ebert. We were talking about lately. movies. I mean, hey, so hey, I had to get with cars. Hey, there you go. Have you uh, seen the new Transformers? I was going to say the new Transformers. It was, I, yeah. I watched the last one. I didn't understand what was going on. It was. Oh, a, go see the second one. It was like a blur of pieces. <laughs> go see the second one. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, or third one. The third, third, third. I'm sorry. Third, third one. Go the see the third one. one. I, I just, I, I don't know. Can't tell them to depart. Let's see now. Jimmy Johnson and Montoya and Dale Jr. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all the their cars, cars are in there. Yeah, yeah. so and they it's do pretty some, cool. Uh, parade laps at Daytona at the beginning of the year, there, right? And I think they're going to be at Richmond. Oh yeah. Well, well speaking of Richmond, well. yeah. Did you get the call or no? Well, you didn't do it with us last year. The arrive and drive. No, I did the Bentley Chevrolet arrive and drive. I did the uh, Mike basically. Thing. You show up, you give them some personal information, show them your license, do a breathalyzer, and you can come out and drive, drive a, a Chevrolet. Uh, drive a brand new Chevrolet, up to and including the uh, Corvette. Wow! So Corvette Z28 stuff like that, and you will have a uh, professional coach 
show for someone screaming in a passenger seat like myself. Do you get to drive in a road course or is it circle track? No, it's like an autocross. They set up an autocross yeah. in the parking lot and they do this, uh, they'll do this Friday and Saturday from like 10 to 7, something like that. We'll have you to do were, that this time. Yeah, we'll come over and do that. But you were talking about it. What was the most popular car to drive? Uh, I, you know what, for me, it was the Volt, the little electric car. Now, I mean, I'm not trying to compare it to a Corvette, but, I, you know, I got in a Corvette, and you know, you're sitting at about, you got a bug's eye view of the world because you're about that high off the ground. Yeah. And big tire, you know it's going to go like hell, and you expect to be impressed. It's a vet. It's, you know, it's, a, it's bang for the buck. It's the best supercar on the planet. Right. But the Volt, I it's an electric car. You get in, you push the button, it bring, turns on. It gives you sound effects because you can't hear the motor because it's waiting for you. <laughs> the power steering activates, the brake gets soft because the power comes on and you... And it'll go. I mean, it'll run. That thing will run with any force on. Because, you know, we, we tried it out. And, of course, you know, it's all professional drivers, sports car racers. Uh, some of my fellow competitors, Rusty Wood, his spotter was out there, Mike Leach. Yeah. You know, race car drivers. We didn't drive it nice. <laughs> we drove we it like we just fun. stole it. The cops were close. And it actually handled really, really well. Uh, yeah. And it went, uh, it would go, we ran the hell out of that thing for five hours, six hours, you know, foot to the, foot to the floor, <laughs> gas brake, you know, uh, and all on battery. And then you just uh, plug it in. And even when the battery dies, it still got like 50 miles to the gallon or something like that. Wow. Yeah, for the second day, we plugged it into a pole and put a shock glass worth of gas in it and drove the whole next day. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> I don't even think they put gas in it. It just, it, it just, just charged it back up. Wow. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a kid's little, you know, little Pines motorcycle. You just plug the thing in yeah. and play with it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, James Long got one of them fusions that's uh, the hybrid. The electric over Well, Chevy's gas. paying me next week, so I'm not allowed to talk about Ford. Well, no. <laughs> he, he went out and bought one. And to go to Florida and back right. was fifty dollars in gas. He said most and, and, yeah. and had the most power. I, I'm just saying it's a gas electric like the Volt, you know. I'm right, not, right. Well, I mean, uh, for most people, I mean, I commute like maybe my round trip is like maybe sixty miles a day. That car would more than likely go back and forth to work and never burn an ounce of gas. But, yeah, you know, it's got a system in it so that eventually it will start burning the gas off, so it doesn't. You have to put fresh gas in it. Right. But uh, you know, just for driving it back and forth to work, rather than cycling the fuel out of it, I don't, I don't think I would ever put gas in the car. Yeah, and that's that's great. That okay. would be the weird part, though, is pulling up to a, a stoplight and stopping and hearing nothing. Oh yeah, well, it's got cool sound effects with great stereo too. It's like turning on, it's like you know when you turn on your PlayStation at home and you get that, ta-da, your game's on. Yeah, it's got a button. You just don't have a key. I think it had a key. You just and I like the chip, and as soon as it was in the car, it was you know it was in. Push the button, you know, ta-da, where do you want to go? <laughs> cool gauges and screens and all that technological stuff that I could barely work. <laughs> now, what, what's happening with your new sponsor we, you were telling me about? We have a wonderful new sponsor that just came on, uh, One Soul Shoes. It is a ladies' shoe. It is a, uh, they've had several designs, and one of the most popular is like a wedge-style shoe, which most ladies know uh, from what they tell me, are very comfortable. Um, but what it's, it's... I hope um, you don't know they're comfortable. No, I've never worn wedges, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> they don't make them... Just wedges. making sure. But if they made them in fireproof, too, I'd give them a shot, because they look comfy. <laughs> but what they... It's really a, a brilliant idea, because every woman, I'm sure, has that closet full of shoes. This has a replaceable top to it. It's got like a snap or some kind of connecting device, and you can buy top after top and change the color of the shoe, and you've got, still got this one super comfortable shoe that doesn't blister the hell out. Come on, how many times you take a young lady to a fancy whatever, and the shoes are killing her? And you get home, and it looks like her feet were attacked by piranha. Yeah, I can, yeah. So, and But you can get them customized, too. In fact, I think they're making some Joe Scarborough racing tops, and we'll be out there. Uh, with a display September 3rd at Langley. We should have some lovely young ladies out there displaying them. Leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, don't you touch. My mind. Don't touch their. <laughs> oh, I'm married. Uh, <laughs> have at it, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> you think Dad was in the other room didn't catch Are they over no, 21? I, I'm sorry? Are they over 21? The, the shoes or the girls? The, the, the girls. The shoes or the girls? I, I, I don't know. 
because they're over 18. If they, if they snag most of the not models, good like from Wilhelmina, they're, they're used to over 18. 18. And I'm sure they're lovely young ladies. We've, we've, uh, my, my girlfriend, Deb, has uh, she, she's a professional photographer, so she's got some model connections that she's been hooking up and and, uh, and, and getting some girls some, some opportunities to come out. And uh, that would be a good time. Mostly amateur or semi pro models that are going to come out and, and do that kind of thing. Cool. But it's about the shoes. Dude, the shoes. Look down at the shoes. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> You get down and look at the shoes. No, but it's a wonderful <laughs> company. They've been very supportive. And um, it's great. We were supposed to be advertising for them at Southside and Langley, but Southside really, really stuck it to us. And I'm not going to start bad. Or should I? I don't hey, know. When, it's, when, they the rule it's you when they change the damn rule book on you an hour before the race starts, when you're one point out of the championship with two races left, that's scummy. Sorry. So all the folks that went out to see us run out at Southside, I thank you for support, and I apologize for us not being here. If I could have given you some heads up, I would have fixed the car and been there or changed what they wanted because we were in contention, but they didn't. So What did, what did they change on? Well, at the beginning of the season, Southside's running an, an antiquated rule book, and, and I asked the tech inspector, the chief tech inspector, I said, will you accept cars under Langley rules? And his response was, the books are the same. I said, no, they're not. He said, yes, they are. And before we got into I know you are, but what am I, I pointed out the things that are different in the book and what makes my car legal at Langley and does it make it legal at Southside. So they said, they got back to me about three days later, and I said, okay, come out and race. We'll honor the Langley rules. Great. So I'm running against all the same cars that were running. We're running against Chris Johnson and, and Mike Rudy. Great, great race and great battles. I'm having a great time out there. The fans are digging at one point battled for the points championship. Noon Friday, we intended on rolling out of the shop at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, noon Friday, I get a call from the tech inspector. says, hey, you know those rules that we were allowing from Langley? You we're not allowing them anymore, and we're going to tech for tonight. So, so basically, you're telling me, don't come. Well, you can come, but we're going to tech that stuff tonight. So I have to go home. I can't use coilovers in the back of the car, and I can't use an extended control arm on the right front. So basically, I have to go back to the shop and put a rear and a front suspension in this car in an hour. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You got to you got to do what you got to do. I, we haven't even blueprinted it yet. I mean, we just go back and start welding springs to stuff, but you know, you know, I'm not going to go out there and make a moron out of myself. I'm going to make sure well, you got works. spring helper. You, you don't have the coil over. I got a big spring coil over shock in the back. It's just right. nice and easy. You put two shock mounts on the car, and you got a whole suspension. It's easy. Yeah. Um, you know, but they allowed it in the beginning of the year, and then, uh, you know, two races to go. Sorry. Changed our mind. Wow. So, uh, you know, I told Lauren Edgerton to pick up my tires that are out there in the tech shed, and we're not going back. So, yeah, I'd like to go back. It was a nice track to race. We're having a great time out there. It's close to home. We had a lot of support from our fans. Sponsor obligations out there, but One Soul's been very accommodating with that. Um, we have X amount of races we have to race for them. We'll just pick up a couple other shows. So one of the shows should be uh, October 29th at Franklin County. And we're planning on early October for the new division that I am getting together, which is the Affordable Modified Division. Same cars we're racing now on a uh, inexpensive tire that can be re-raced and actually improves with age. Uh, from what everybody's telling me to have tested these, uh, raced on these tires around the eighth race, you need to put a right rear on it. Six to eight races, they say about the fourth race is the best race on the tire which should take your tire build down approximately 90 percent. Wow. So on the yeah. average modified spending about ten thousand dollars a year in tires, you'll spend maybe a grand. And I got guys telling me that they bring tires out from last season. You know, and bring them inside, keep good. them warm so they don't dry rot, and they put them on the car from, you know, back yeah. in the spring and they come out and continue racing on it. So it's I'm really doing that, I'm really trying to get it together because it's, I just have too many friends with park race cars. And guys that yep. are very good, competent race car drivers that I want to see come out and race. And, and, and can't afford, can't afford it. it. Yep. Yeah. So, <coughs> and at one point I was nearly one of them. So I, uh, it's kind of Been there, done that. Yeah, you know, I faced the end of my racing career, you know, nose to nose. When I, I was, you know, fortunate enough to get a break by Aftershock, uh, Aftershock Motorsports, to, uh, to drive for them. So. And it's worked out very well. It's been a very good. It has. Uh, Vicky Castigan is a wonderful owner. I yeah. mean, she's been supportive through us through you know the, the ups, the downs, blowing motors every other week. When we, you know, uh, when we had those issues back a couple of years back, uh, 
you know, winning championships. Obviously, it's be, easy to be supportive when you're winning championships. But you know, four years we did, we won two championships with the team, so it's yeah, it's, it's a very it's a very good team. I I am uh, very not a religious man, but I am blessed to yep. have landed that opportunity, and I, I it's worked out very every well. Every day I push the start button on that car, I, I I thank you for giving me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So well, let's do a quick run through because we didn't do any of it. We've been running so hard of some of our friends out here. This isn't freeze frame. He's got a thing coming up. Oh, People we are froze. More interesting and probably prettier than us. <laughs> but anyway. Hi, I'm Sam Hunter. I'm a 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Kiss as live as it gets. You know what? Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's yeah. call it a night. Oh, let's, let's call it a night. Thank your sponsors. Yeah, uh, we actually just got a, a new one recently. Um, Moffitt Homes, Brian Moffitt. Um, they built some awesome custom homes, so they do real great work. And, uh, of course, we've got our other sponsors, First Command Financial Service for financial needs, financial planning, things like that. Um, Race 101, they help us out a lot, and they're actually on their website, race101.net. They're accepting applications for people ages 12 through 28, I believe it is. I think that. I was thinking the same thing. I don't think. But, um, 2012 season, if I remember. But uh, yeah. yeah, they they uh, they really teach a lot. I mean, it's for the price you pay, it is well worth it. The knowledge you gain from from that, and uh -huh. um, but they're they're accepting applications until. The end of this year, I think. Uh, I think that closes January first. So, but they they really will teach you a lot getting getting into that program. But of course, we've got other sponsors of thing. Driving Web Design by Anna Marie Strawhan. Um, we've got Hudson Hall Race and all them guys. They've been helping us out a little bit too this year. Uh, trying to just give us some extra help, make us make us better, give us that extra little bit we need to run up front and win those races. Um, we've got James River Landscaping. Uh, of course, we've got uh, Let's Talk Racing on on the car. Also, uh, Prillman Enterprises, uh, Jeunesse Jeunesse Uniforms. They do a great job embroidering. They do our hats and suits for us. They do awesome. Um, they, there's a lot of them, really. Uh, but um, also, we should all have problems that big. I yeah. have so many sponsors, <laughs> I can't remember them all. <laughs> Well, I got I got Bubba's lawns. <laughs> just don't ever get up to accept a trophy at the end of the year and think you're too smart to remember who your sponsors were. Yeah. Write them down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I have seen at least three times drivers get up there, and I personally have one of my drivers do that. Won the championship, Grand Stock Division. Gets up there, the crew chief gave him a list. He looks at the list and starts, oh, he says, oh, I know everybody. He puts it in his pocket. He forgot PC Doctors and Casey Chevrolet, which are his two biggest sponsors. Thank He's probably doctors. not at either one of those places tonight, is he? No. You know, on that note, I just got to thank two guys that I work with hand-in-hand -hand all the time. As so much that I forget their sponsors. That's Jonathan McMullen of McMullen Race Engines. He's also my crew chief. I just forget that he has an engine building business. I just, yeah, he builds magnificent pieces. And Gene Nichols. Gene Nichols is always out there with his head under the car so much he's like one of the crew guys, and, and I just you forget. You, I completely yeah. forget. I, Gene forget came over, engine. dropped the carburetor in the car Saturday night, and knocked a tenth off it, and cleaned up the plugs. You remember yeah. the old Smoky? It don't smoke anymore. Gene <laughs> really? fixed it all. Oh yeah, yeah. Just here, put that on. What do you jet it? Leave it alone. They set the float. Don't touch it. Okay, put the air cleaner on it, Gene. Just put the air cleaner on it. <laughs> okay. How'd you like that? Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> Um, everybody got all their sponsors? Yes. I believe yeah, so. We covered one soul. Right. Innovative machine down there in Charles City. Hyperion Farms. Hope all the horses are doing well after the uh, after the earthquakes yesterday. Probably doing better than the people on the news. Tolliver House Restaurant up in Gordonsville. 
my business, you know, shopware. I cannot plug me and but, take I mean, me I, home I, still. You know what I thought was nice was sitting there thinking after the earthquake, aftershock. Aftershock. It's our weekend. It's <laughs> our weekend coming. There's yeah. one aftershock coming still. That's mine. <laughs> Where are you racing it this weekend? You're not. We're not. Nobody's racing. They're gonna, we're going to be bailing. I'm, I'm going to well, race chainsaws in my driveway this weekend. You and Deb come down, Deb come down and we'll have a, a hurricane party Saturday. It's if I can get out of my driveway. No, oh, I know you can get out of your driveway. You haven't seen my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to come up there with chainsaws? It's 100 and, yards of woods. And, and the direction, the last direction to my house is the two tire tracks into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Almost the second to last one is, is a, go turn. 100 feet on the dirt road. <laughs> take a left at the oak tree. When you get to old man Johnson's barn, take a right. <laughs> I'm sure it's in the GPS settings here, right? Yeah. All right, everybody, we'd like to thank you all for listening and watching us tonight. It's been a hoot, that's for sure. See ya. Good night. Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.